Welcome to the Wayne Public Library's virtual author chat. My guest today is Erica Alexander. Erica has been a storyteller her entire life. She's not, if she's not writing stories, she's daydreaming about them, which has gotten her into trouble once or twice. Erica has been married to her book boyfriend for 29 years, mom to teen boys and a menagerie of rescue animals, including a feral cat colony she cares for in her backyard. Erica has degrees in communication and computer science, and she loves history, all things Native American, and anything that's off the beaten path and weird. Welcome, Erica. Please tell us a little more about yourself and your new novel, In Her Eyes. Thank you. Hi, guys. Oh, um, that pretty much covers it. I've been married for 29 years, as you said. You know, it's, uh, and I have two teenage boys, one in college, one in high school. I love books above all things. Now, books have always been my escape. Libraries are my favorite place in the world. And I hit my local library at least once a week, you know. And um, my new book, In Her Eyes, uh, is a story of a, um, a detective and a woman who is a museum curator but she has a secret that she doesn't reveal to anyone and she somehow figures her out uh, a crime a murder and she goes and reports that and that makes her the number one suspect because she knows things nobody should know and she has to reveal her secret to this detective in order to um one free her name and two she's going to help him solve the case okay. Um, is there something um, that you can tell us about in her eyes that isn't in the blurb, like something that is in the book that, you know, maybe? It, it, yes. Um, you learned just in the very first page that this, she has a gift called psychometry. Uh, if you don't know what psychometry is, it's the ability to read an object by touching. So if you touch any object, you can read the memories associated with that object. Um, another thing that people will not know, the very the, the prologue in this book, there's a lot of my own life in this story. Thankfully, not not of the the gory, no scary parts. But the very first line uh, in the prologue is, um, "The first time I died was at my birth," and she dies two more times uh, before she becomes an adult. Now, this is my life. I was not breathing when I was born. So I had to be revived when I was born. So the first time I died was that my birth is actually true because that's what happened to me when I was born. And then she goes and she has two more incidents when she has near death experience. They both, they both happen to me in the same way that happened in the book. So there's something that people don't know. There's always a little bit of truth in fiction. Absolutely. Um, of all the books that you've written, do you have a favorite character? Oh, come on. That's like, it's like you asked me who's my favorite child, you know? I, I love them all, and I love them all for, like, different reasons. And all of them have a little bit of me, Amy. Uh, my first book, Because of Logan, I love Logan because he's, like, just really down-to-earth, um, real kind of guy that every woman wants, you know, and he's, like, caring and loving. I love um, River and because of uh, Leon, because she's completely outspoken. She has no filters. So whatever's in her mind comes out and she doesn't care who it is that she's saying she So I love that energy, that spunk that she has. Um, for because of Dylan, I love Becca. Becca is, is such a, was such a hard character to, to write. I had panic attacks writing that character because she the experience that she lived through the you know the thing that she went in through life would just make me I had to stop writing because I'll be crying the whole time so I love her for her resilience her strength and for being able to go through a whole lot of uh, trauma and, da and damage at an early age and then come out on the other side you know stronger for it so there's a little bit of me in all those characters and, and I think there's a little bit of everyone who reads the books in those characters too okay um as you mentioned, you're you're married to your book boyfriend for 29 years. And um, I was on your website and I read your bio and um, 
you were born um, in Rio de Janeiro, um, and um, when you got to the United States, um, you had plans. And then on your second day here, you saw your husband and you basically fell in love at first sight. <laughs> so right. has your own love story inspired your writing? There is, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it goes in, into everything, you know, like I said, like I'm in my moving car driving and I see this guy on the side of the road walking his dog and I thought like, oh my God, he's just perfect. I'm going to marry him. And I did about a year later. We got married and it's been 29 years. It's going to be 30 years, September of this year, that we're going to be together. And, and he is my book boyfriend. Does not mean that I don't want to twist his neck every once in a while because they guys, you know, they make us do things, want to do things like that. But it has, it has inspired. There's a lot of, of him. When he, when he read my first book because of Logan, he was halfway through and he looks at me, he says, this is me, right? I'm Logan, right? <laughs> So, so a lot of it, you know, or for, or for conversations we had, you know, and situations we've been to, they all kind of slide in, you know, and when he reads the books, he's always pointing them out to me. So, okay, he was paying attention too. <laughs> That's good to know. That's good to know that he's paying attention and he can find it in the plots. That's yes. Um, what are you currently working on now? Uh, the story I'm working on is a story for a, a young widow with a son, and she's working to overcome uh, her grief. So she, she lost her husband in an accident, and she's very uh, deep into grief, and she has a, a, a five-year-old. So it's her story about overcoming grief and learning to love and allow herself to be loved again, because she's not willing to do either one right now. She doesn't want to love again. She married her her childhood best friend. She doesn't want to love again. She doesn't want to be loved again. So it's getting her out of that place where I have to allow myself to love again and I have to allow myself to be loved again. Doing that does not mean that I'm any less in love than the you know the person I lost. Mm -hmm. well, as you said before, there's a little bit of of, of everybody. Dad, yes, I, I know. She's very close to my life. Um, what you just said. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, do you hear from your readers? And um, what kind of things do they say? Yes, yes. Uh, every once in a while, I'll get a, 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 a DM from somebody and a direct message or they send emails. Um, there's a few that sticks out in my mind. Um, somebody wrote me about because of Dylan and they told me that Reading that book did more for them than years of therapy had done before because of the they share the same trauma that my character shared and and it just leaving this character's head and watching her overcome that is that it helps them tremendously. And I have a, a little novella that's called Seventeen Wishes, and that's about oh, um, a boy who needs um, a heart transplant. And a person read that book. And they told me that right after they finished reading the book and they went and they rushed as an organ donor. So I said, wow, that is, there is like, thank you. That that validates that entire book because I hope that people, I'm an organ donor and I hope that people would read it and understand how important it is, uh, you know, it to is. just be an organ donor. Um, and do you ever read your book reviews? Um, how do you deal with like a good one or a bad one? <laughs> I do. I, I, I actually read all of them. Uh, I learn a lot from my reviews, whether it be positive or negative. Of course, you love the four and five star reviews better than the one or two star reviews. But um, I'm a huge uh, fan of Dr. Wayne Dyer. I read most of his books and he said two things that always stuck with me. One was uh, other people's opinions are none of my business because when you read a book, it's never about you as the writer is always about the story and how that person relates to that story. So they bring the experience, they bring the bias with themselves when they're reading a book. And sometimes they don't connect with it because it's just not meant for them. You know. And the other thing that he said is detach from the outcome. Writing the book was my joy. I do it because I love books and I love reading, I love writing. But once it's done and it's out into the world, it's no longer mine. 
I know we talk about books about being your babies, but they really not. There's something I created and I put all oh, my love and heart and soul and, and sometimes tears and a lot of curse words to into them. But, you know, they no longer mine. So once they out, they publish, they belong to the world. They belong to the reader. So I detach from the outcome. You love it, great. You don't love, that's fine. We go to the next one. We all have books we love and we don't. So I cannot hold somebody at a higher standard than I would hold them myself. I'm allowed not to like a book and they allowed not to like a book, even if it's mine. That's a good way to approach it. That's that's actually a great way to approach a lot of things in life and not just. <laughs> that. That's pretty much how I approach life. You know, it's detached from the outcome. And I just, I can only control myself in what I do, what other people think or do or the actions that's outside of my parameters. So what inspired you to start writing? Oh, gosh, when, see, I always, I thought I was always a writer. I, when I was little, I remember I would be putting myself to sleep, making up stories in my mind. I would have entire stories, like a book, which now I would finish this chapter tonight, fall asleep. Next night, I would pick up where I left and it create, you know, the story would continue for weeks and weeks. I would finish one, I would start another. When I was cleaning the house, vacuum, I was making up stories in my mind. That's bad habit in school when you're supposed to be paying attention. That's why you got trouble a few times like, hello. <laughs> but the physicality, the actual writing, it didn't happen much or much later until um, my kids were a little grown and it, and it required less hands-on. And, and I worked for some 30 years and then I stopped working and dedicated myself to being a mom and then when they were in school and I had that free time I joined a group with like-minded um, you know aspiring writers and we pushed each other and, and that was the thing that motivated me like I need the external pressure you know I can live inside of my head very happy content but I need the external pressure and we decided to get together and, and write each person would write a little short story and we decided to do an anthology, which we published for just um, a month. And then we donated the money from the anthology to um, Colleen Silver uh, Bookworm Box. And that was it. You know, I always had the bug, but I never allowed it to catch me until I actually sat down and, and, and went to the keyboard. And once I did that, that was it. I was hooked. There was no going back. Um. What is the most difficult part of writing for you? I'm a very scattered person. So the, the actual sitting down and, and, and making, you know, the, make, having the discipline and the consistency for me is just, I, I'm an intuitive writer. So I, I write with the flow, you know, I, I, and when it comes to me, I'll do it. But Sometimes I just have to force myself and sit down and 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 do it because I otherwise I would just be daydreaming in my head instead of actually sitting down and doing so. For me, the hardest part is just to forcing myself to sit down and get off my head and put this, the words to the paper. Okay. And um, do you plot your novels? How I can even plot dinner. <laughs> no. <laughs> like every night five o'clock I'm opening the fridge what we gonna eat today <laughs> you know no I'm not a plotter at all um like I said I'm an intuitive uh, writer or with people some people call it a pantser um I have an idea and, and basically the, each story starts with uh, a character pops in my head and said hello my name is Sky and this is my story now tell it you know, and they come to me with with names and personalities and a, an entire backstory, and I basically trying to grab everything and make it work. I will have some time whilst doing this this discovery process and and with the character telling these stories that, okay, so I need two or three things that I know that's gonna happen. We'll call them plot points. But as far as having a whole story written, I, I don't. Like the in her eyes, I didn't know how that story would end until about 80%. I got to 80%, I'm sitting there trying to brainstorm and then like, oh, it just, no. They just told me this is what's gonna happen. Okay, thank you for telling me when I'm 80% and the book is already 
on pre-order and I have a month to finish this thing, you know, so yeah, I just have to, have to wait for them to, to tell me. And I have friend, friends who plot like to them every single detail and, and I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. I, I am a bit amazed. I've, I've spoken to many authors doing this and um, I am really impressed by the ones that tell me they have these really detailed plots um, and, you know, even the ones that have boards and stuff. Um, for me, it's more the movie. It's like a movie in my head that's playing yes. out. And you got to just you know, get to the keyboard as quickly as possible to capture it, is, it all. That's exactly, it's exactly a movie in my head in full color, zooming in, zooming out. And, and I just have to grab it as fast as I can. That's exactly it. So what, what do you think makes a good story? See, that, that's a great question because... Um, you could have a story with a perfect plot and perfect writing and, and perfect grammar. And that is still might not be a good story, even though technically it has everything to be a perfect story. And you could have a story, and I think we all have read books like that. You can work with nights, it's technically perfect, but it doesn't resonate with me. You can see a book that is all over the place, but a story sucks you in right away. And you like, you see typos, you see a plot hole, but you still involved. The story just grabs you by the throat and does not let you go. And and I think it's um, what I call like that French expression, je ne sais quoi. It's it means something that doesn't really have an explanation, not quite, but it has the quality that you recognize. You see it, you know, you know it, recognize it, but it's not exactly something that you can put a finger on. For books, for me, it's always like like that. You know, you can see. The structure being perfect, this plot being perfect, but doesn't talk, doesn't speak to you. And other stories that don't have none of that, but they do. So I think it's more than, than no, a perfect plot or perfect structure. It has to create a connection to the reader because the books you love the most are the books you connect with the most. So that's, that's, that's something. And that might be different for everybody. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, and no, you know, not, no one book is for everybody. So, you know, exactly. I mean, hey, we have a library full of books. So we're glad that. No yes. One book is for um, on average, how long does it take you to write your books? Too long. Oh, gosh. Too long. <laughs> yes, too long. It takes me on average about a year, even two years, like because it didn't took me two years to write. That story was so hard to write, it took me two years. I have um, the shortest one, like maybe four or five months to write. But again, because I'm not a consistent writer, and I know that's with me, but that's my method. That's how my brain works. You know, I see authors who can write a book in a week, and I'm like, that blows my mind. I don't know how you do that. I wish I'm very, very jealous and envious of them, but it's not, it's not how my brain works. And I think it's, and I've tried, but I think you waste a lot of energy fighting who you are and how your mind works. So you know, just just go with the flow. So I wish I could write faster, but it takes longer than I want. I'm still trying to push it though. Okay. Um, what is your writing routine? Do you have one? <laughs> Not really. I have during the summer when. Um, the kids are out of school and I can sleep in late. I I like to write the night. My brain works best in the middle of the night. You know, I between like midnight to 2, 3 a.m. That's when my brain feels the, you know, the, the most creative. Uh, I'm not a morning person at all. So I, I try to write in the morning. That doesn't usually work. And I have things that, and I know my own quirks, like I need to be home alone now to, for it to work and then if I have to go to the store in the morning then that just just you know, messes up my whole my whole thing so I am trying to get better with with um the schedule uh in 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 her eyes I wrote like this I wrote it took me a year to write 45,000 words and it took me six weeks to write the next 50,000 because I just kind of put myself in that writing mind. And that was a trick that I learned from, from Becca Syme. Um, she has a wonderful channel on YouTube if you wanna check her out. It was uh, two minutes 
that I, whatever you do, when you don't feel like writing, just sit at your computer for two minutes, whether you're just staring at the screen at the manuscript, whether you're just editing a couple lines, or you're just, you know, looking at it over, just sit on it two minutes, and you find that two minutes turned into five and into 10 minutes in an hour, two or three hours. So that's how I did 50,000 words in six weeks, because I I promise myself two minutes every day. So you have to trick yourself sometimes. So I have to go back to my doing my two minutes for, for the book I'm currently writing right now. Okay. Um, how many books have you published? Like how many in total have you published? I have five. So one novella and four full novels. Okay. And what was your publishing journey like for the first one? I just wanted to write and publish. I never even considered um, getting an agent or submitting to uh, publishing housing at all. I just wanted to go indie. I, I love being able to control my hours and control the work I do. I know many authors who have publishing deals and um, the editors can tell you change this or change that because they have the power to tell you that. And they also take a good chunk of your royalties, you know. So I rather have the control over my own work, uh, you know, and be able to keep all my royalties. Thank you very much, you know. So that's that's another thing. And I'm a little bit of control freak. So having control over my work and how I do it and how I publish over my own covers, you know, and and titles and things like that, I I prefer. So I never that was me. Just jump in and do it and your 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 first three books um the covers are very different from your from your latest book um was that on purpose did you just switch you're talking about the the paperbacks the paperbacks yes yes so um there's this thing with a lot of the the, the ebook covers have couples on them or they all have couples on them with the heads cut off but when i read a book myself I like to picture the character in a certain way and sometimes if they don't match the cover it's like you know it's like throws me off so the first three uh, because of Logan because of Lee and because of Dylan that's a, that's the trilogy uh, the, the paperback covers um, I just went to the uh, the illustrator covers I love them I think they're cute and a lot of readers they prefer those because they don't want to be reading like a, a a man chest to a couple on a cover. There's there is still some bias against romance authors and romance books, sadly, I you know, which is crazy because I always ask why you have things against romance when everybody wants to love and be loved. Everybody wants the perfect romantic partner. So why there's so much bias against that I don't understand, you know. So that's the reason I, I changed the covers for the illustrated ones because you know people love them. I love them, and then, and I was also procrastinating. So when I procrastinated, the other things that look like I'm working, but it's not. <laughs> so, so instead of writing, I was making new covers. So the the, the those behind you, I see I see the three books. Those are, yes. are new covers. They had different covers. Uh, they have they have different covers for for the e the ebooks have different covers. They have couples in them. Okay. Um, and you're 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 in her eyes. It's it's got a couple. Um, it has has you, a couple, and then and that and and your paperback is going to have this. It has the same. It, it has this. For in her eyes, I kept the same. Uh, in her eyes, it's a romantic suspense. So it was kind of I was trying to figure out. Uh, romantic suspense doesn't really translate well for uh, to to the illustrated covers. So I kept I kept the couple. Plus, I was pressed for time with my pre-order on Amazon and. If if you miss the pre-order on Amazon, they get really mad at you, and then they they keep you no, know, they don't allow you to do pre-orders for a whole year, so you don't want to mess up with the Amazon gods. Uh, okay. Um, and what was one of the most surprising things you learned in publishing your books? Before I ever published a book, I had no idea what was involved in it. You know, I guess most people don't, unless you're very involved with the publishing, unless you, you're a reader who is really involved with it. I was a reader. I pick up a book, I read, put it to the side, pick up the next one. I'm, I read four or five books a week. I read a lot. So I never took the time to figure it out what goes into it, you know? And once I started like, oh my God, 
you don't write a book and publish. You write a book and then you rewrite and you rewrite. My process, I go to at least a dozen rewrites easily to you know, a dozen different until, the, until I get to the point where, okay, I think this is good enough for the editors. And, and then it goes to uh, different editors. I, I have a development editor and I go to the you know, regular editor, line copy editor. And when that's done, I have the book goes to a proofreader. And of course, typos are like gremlins. You know, they multiply at midnight and show up the next day, even after you had multiple rounds of editors going through them. So I, I didn't realize how much work was involved that you have to write and rewrite and, 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 and do this dozens of times. So, but now I, now I know, and I have a lot more respect for the work that goes in, into a book. And that's something I guess a lot of people who it's not, doesn't do, doesn't understand that. And for aspiring writers to don't compare your work in progress with somebody else's finished work. You have no idea how much time or how many editors, how many rounds of writings you know, a book went through to get to the to what you have hold on your hands. You know. So. Um, you mentioned all the different people who see your work. Do you do you use um, beta or arc readers? I, I do. I have a group of authors that, that we trade pages every week or every other week, depending on the time of the year. So um, there's five of us. We've been doing this for a few years and it's invaluable you now because writing is a solitary endeavor. You, you're in your head all the time. And sometimes you're locked into something and you're not able to see a, a different you know, idea, a different uh, opportunity. So when you trade the pages with the authors, they might point in a direction they didn't think of, but wow, thank you. That was a genius idea. I'm going to do that. And those are my alpha readers. And then after the book is complete, then you have a couple better readers, somebody who reads the book as a, a finished product, but not yet completely done. And then they might give you suggestions and ideas or for things too. And the arcs come in once the book, no, the arc readers come in when the book is completely done. And, and then just um, those are loyal readers. And I sometimes put out a form and say, I have a new book coming out. If you like this kind of story, you know, you want to you want a copy of it, then let me know. And then I just send in the books. You just mentioned um, a group of, um, I will assume, critique partners. Um, how uh, important are they, were they in, you know, was joining a writer's group or having critique partners for your writing? I think it's extremely important. I think they, they make my stories and they make myself as, an, as a writer better because, you know, you have to get out of your own way sometimes. And sometimes you need to judge from somebody outside you, you know, so they, they have helped me tremendously. Um, I, I could not put those books out with, without their help. So credit to them and um what advice would you give a new writer that's just starting out uh the number one thing is to read you have to read read and read read in the genre you want to, to write if you want to be a romance writer read romance if you want to be a paranormal romance writer jump in and read all the paranormal romance writers books you learn from other authors you know just like you can learn to cook by watching your mom or your grandma in the kitchen. You learn from other writers uh, by watching uh, and reading what they, they write. And then you open up a little more and you read other genres. You wanna find your tribe. You wanna find a group of people who are like-minded, who are writing the same things that you're writing so you can help each other. And you wanna read craft books. You know, I, I've been reading for many years. I've been a writer in my mind for many years, and I still reading craft books. I probably read at least one month, one a month. I'm always picking up new craft books. Now, it's always a learning process. You always learn something um, from workshops and things like that, but reading is, is key, is, is number one. I don't understand somebody who says, I want to be a writer, but I don't like to read. It, no, it's like saying you want to be a chef, but you don't like to cook. True, true, very true. Um, and then at the, I always end um, these chats with a fun question. So my question to you is, um, in your bio, I read that you have a love of dandelions. I do. So what is it about them that you love? 
oh my gosh, what's not to love? They, they cute. And, you know, there's, there's this old saying that says some people look at on the line and see as a weed. Some people look at on the line and see as a wish. I always see wishes, you know, and on the lions, like my, my children, when they're very little, they toddlers, they'll be playing the grass and they all pick the little yellow flowers to give it to me. So then the lions are the first flowers my children gave to me. And then when the dandelion, you know, the flower dies out and then the seeds come out and you have the gorgeous little perfect puff full of wishes, you know, then the kids like to play and blow, which actually, look, I have one right on my desk. This wow. is a paper, this is a paperweight. And oh, how I, cool is that? Like, look how perfect is this? Is it in this gorgeous? I have a million wishes right over here. So why not make wishes? The universe is listening. You just got to make your wishes. I agree. <laughs> I see deadlines <laughs> and see wishes too. <laughs> How I grew up. Well, Erica, it's been wonderful chatting with you. The this same. Was great. <laughs> I really learned a lot, and um, I wish you all the best of luck with your um, your new project. And Thank you so much. In her eyes, also, um, and we look forward to uh, any of your future uh, endeavors and. Uh, getting them for the libraries. Good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.